I don't think there should be any concern in the short term. So I think the coverage that the vaccine offers is adequate against this new variant. It has quite a few mutations in the critical parts of the, the viral genome, but not enough of these mutations to bypass the vaccine. So that's a piece of good news. Um, current vaccines should be adequate at this stage. What about the, um, the length of immunity after taking the vaccine? Because if we've seen genetic changes in the virus composition itself, will we see the B cells and the T cells, those that are triggered to develop immunity, will they give us the long lasting immunity that we previously hoped for? That's a complicated question and it's only with the benefit of hindsight that we will be fully able to assess, let's say, how long the vaccine protect, protects against um, infection. Now, I'd like to state that it's not completely black and white. It's not like you're vaccinated and, let's say, you're protected, sure, but then immunity wanes a little bit. And that's expected with natural immunity, that's expected with the vaccine, but it doesn't mean that overnight suddenly you're completely vulnerable. You're still protected. From the most severe symptoms so it's still useful even down the line several years probably many years down the line but the full protection of really allowing you not to be infected this might not last for forever let's say that might last for a year or two then that's there's an additional complication which is that the virus is changing so we're seeing that already at the moment we have no lineage that we think or no lineage have any reason to believe would escape the vaccine but eventually with time these will arise and at some point we'll probably be facing a situation like with the seasonal flu where essentially people need to be re-vaccinated from time to time at regular intervals. Francois, as reports were crossing yesterday and uh, experts were analysing this new strain, there was a, a discussion that was taking place as to whether children can more easily catch the virus now. What do you think uh, in terms of what you're seeing now? Because having lived through the school system, it felt like in this wave there were many more cases of children being exposed and positive COVID tests coming through. But it's hard to know whether that was just a demystifying the, the, the virus and just more communication around it or whether there had been more elevated cases amongst children. What do you make of the, the changes and whether children could be potentially more at risk now? Well, I don't think children would be more at risk in the sense that this lineage is not more lethal. It doesn't lead to more severe symptoms. And it might be slightly more transmissible, possibly, but this still requires actually confirmation. But we know that children can be infected. Uh, we know that children fare generally very, very well with infection. So the risk to someone who is, let's say, over 80 is something like 100 times higher. The risk of dying is 100 times higher for someone who's 80 than a young child. So the risk of dying or being very, very ill is low for children. And this won't change with this virus. Now, there might possibly be, but it's, it's premature to really say much about that. Maybe this virus circulates slightly better in children. Maybe children transmit it slightly better. But the main risk is not to the children themselves. The main risk is for children to pass it on to someone who's vulnerable. That's so, no, I think we should not... Perhaps well, that's significant because we're talking about under-16s not being recommended to have a vaccine given the lack of testing at this point. And there's also a discussion as to whether schools then reopen if you've got this increased transmissibility uh, that children are, are uh, more exposed now. So what happens from here in terms of social distancing and the risk that children could pose to the wider population? So I'd like to stress that there is no evidence at all, zero, that this uh, strain actually circulates better in children. There, has been, there have been some rumours, uh, but there's absolutely no evidence. Um, now, what we know at this stage is that in the UK, um, the population that has been affected with this variant, about 90% were below the age of 60. But that roughly corresponds to the average age of the UK population because about 84% are below 60. So if you assume that the people most at risk, the elderly shelter, are more likely to shelter, this is actually completely in line with what we expect on the kind of random distribution along age classes. So I don't think we should create a panic here. There's really no evidence for this virus being 
let's say, more transmissible or nastier in children. So I think we have enough problems now without creating new, new, new hypothetical problems.